Now that you've added easy digital downloads to your site, configured it, added products, and configured the overall site to work as an e-commerce site, it's time to test it as if you were a customer. That way, you'll be able to identify any pain points or things that don't work right, and you'll be able to make sure that people who visit the site can buy the products they actually want to purchase. Before we do that, though, let's take a quick look at the settings again to make sure that everything is right. I'll go back to my dashboard and go to Downloads and Settings. And from here, I'm going to make sure that Test Mode is currently unchecked so that I can actually buy products. And I'm going to go into Payment Gateways and check what payment gateways I currently have available. I have PayPal, Test Payment, and Stripe all activated, which means I can test for any one of them. Now, if you're going to test for PayPal, I'll reiterate that you need to use a PayPal sandbox account and not your real account. Otherwise, you'll have to actually pay money to make sure that this test works. For Stripe, you need to fill in all the information, in particular, the test secret key and the test publishable key, and make sure that Stripe is set to test mode to make this work. Now that I know everything is set correctly, I can open the site in an incognito window, and that way I can test the site without being logged in. So I'll test it just like someone who just landed on the site. Now let's say I want to buy that city guide we just created. I'll click on City Guides, and here I find the city guide I want. And when I go in, I can look at the picture, I can read the text, I can open the gallery if I want to. And if I'm satisfied that this is what I want to buy, I'll scroll to the bottom and click $10 Purchase. After the product is added to the cart, I get a prompt that I can go to the cart that goes away after a little while. And if I scroll up, I can see that in my sidebar, I have a cart with one item, it's the Boston City Guide for $10, and I can click Remove if I want to, or go to Checkout. That way, I can continue surfing the site and look at other products, and then I can add them to the cart as well, and I'll see them list here in the sidebar, and I can go to the checkout at any time. I'm going to go to the checkout, and then again, I can see the product I purchased, and if I want to, I can remove it. From here, I need to select a payment method. As you can see, I still have PayPal, test payment and credit card as options. And depending on which one I choose, I'll get different information that I need to fill out. For all three, I need to either log in or create an account because I set the site up so that you have to be logged in to buy anything. And for PayPal, I need to provide an email address, a first name and a last name. If I switch to credit card instead, I'll be doing payments through Stripe. And here you see, in addition to the information that was collected by PayPal, I also have to put in my full credit card information. And this is why you need an SSL certificate if you're going to use Stripe as a payment method. Because if you don't have an SSL certificate and you don't have encrypted information between the visitor's browser and your server, anyone can snoop in on the communication and grab the credit card information. So like I said in the WordPress e-commerce core concepts course, if you're going to set up an e-commerce store, you need to have an SSL certificate for the store. And that is especially important if you're using Stripe. I'm going to test the gateway using my test payment option instead. So now I can put in information. I'll start by creating an account. I'll say Owen. I'll set a password. Then I'll set the email address. And I'll put in my first and last name. And then I have to look at the terms and agree to the terms. Now you notice here, when I click on Show Terms, it opens the terms and conditions. And you'll remember from earlier in the course, instead of writing out the full terms and conditions, I just put in a short sentence with a link to it. This is so that people can read the full terms and conditions without having to scroll up and down on this particular screen. Because as you can imagine, if I put all that text on this page, it would scroll far down before you got to the Purchase button. Now that I have all the information input, I can click the Purchase button. But as you can see, nothing's happening. That means something is not working right. So now I need to troubleshoot. And this is precisely why you want to try this experience as a customer. So I'll go back to my site. And I can remember that in the settings here under miscellaneous, it said at the very top, Disable Ajax. Check this to disable Ajax for the shopping cart. So I'm going to try to disable Ajax for the shopping cart and see if that will make any difference. I'll go down and save the changes. Go back to my test page and reload it. 
and then I'll select the payment method again. So I'll set test payment. And now I have to click next because we no longer have that Ajax function that automatically loads things up for us. Here I can create the account. So I'll put in the same information, same very weak password. And I will check agree to terms and conditions and click purchase. As you can see, when I disabled the Ajax, the purchase was completed. And now we have a purchase confirmation that shows us what payment number it was, what the current date is, how much I paid for it. I also have a payment key. And down here, I can download the product. So if I click on it, I can download it onto my computer. In addition, I got an email sent to me with all this information so that I can come back here later and go and look at the purchase confirmation or purchase history, or I can come back and download the product again through the link that's in my email. As you can see, by testing the user experience of the actual shop, you'll be able to do some troubleshooting if it turns out that things are not working properly. When you do this on an external server, it is extremely important that you try out every single permutation and that you try out every single situation you can think a customer will get in and see what happens when you do those different things. If you're going to use a payment gateway, it's also important that you actually make a real payment. So run through the payment experiment using the test gateway first, and then when you think it works, switch to the real gateway and actually make a payment to see that everything works properly. That way you'll be sure that when customers come to your site, they'll be able to actually purchase your products and pay you for them.